Hello, you're welcome to part two of surrogacy and pre-implantation uh, genetic testing. And my guest is still Professor Ladakwa Ashiro, um, the medical director, medical art center. And this is the Yudi Factor. We'll see you after this time. We're back. Um, Prof, thank you for joining us for the concluding part of surrogacy and pre-implantation testing. Good. Yes, we left off where we were talking about, uh, we were talking about the divisions of the cells yeah. and how you can, from those divisions, um, find out which ones are defective. Mm. And um, do we have such in, uh, could, could we just, before we, we, I ask my question, could you just recap a little bit of what you said to us about how the cells are divided? Now back to uh, PGD, the pre yes. or PGT as we call it. We take again the sperm and the egg, they form an embryo that divides in three days to eight cells and in five days to 144 cells. Yes. And we just take a, a few cells from there, usually five to six cells are taken with a technique called laser so that you don't destroy the embryo. And this is, these are not, um, they are easier said than done. You know, all our system, all our staff had to go through training to be able to do this. And once you do that, you take the main embryo and you freeze it. You freeze them one by one in, the, in, in their, individual compartment so you know which embryo is embryo one to ten and they are the, the samples from embryo one is labeled so from embryo ten is labeled so and you analyze those ones in the lab in the genetic laboratory to see what is their genetic composition when whether it's for family balancing for somebody who family has, balancing is if you want a girl or if you want a boy. Yeah, you okay. have three girls and you want a boy. Or you, or have, you have three, three girls, boys, and, boys want and, and want a girl. Yeah, so, so now you can determine what sex of baby you absolutely, want. Absolutely, absolutely. Or people who are in the advanced maternal age. Like if somebody and, like me decides to come and have a child. Yes. Yeah, so you now decide if, about if Down get syndrome. get from you to make sure there is no uh, Down syndrome. Syndrome, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if it's a sickler. Uh, mar uh, couples who are sickle cell carrier, yes. the chances are they can have a sickle cell baby. And before now, what they would do is to get pregnant and risk the chance of having a sickle baby. Yeah. Or if they're about three months down into the pregnancy to 14 weeks, they do what we call amniocentesis yes. to go and analyze the genetic composition of oh, that baby. Yes. Now, if that baby is a normal baby, HBAA, it's fine. But if the baby is SS, then they have a problem, problem yes. that do they go on with that or pregnancy, we pregnancy or do they terminate? Yes. And some of them will end up terminating that pregnancy. So rather than go through that, we can now analyze the genetic composition of an embryo, an embryo yeah. before it is implanted into the mother. So that is why we call it pre-implantation genetic testing or diagnosis. At that time, you can take about five cells from each embryo, and you can take those cells, amplify them, by a technique called uh, polymerase chain reaction. You, you, can, you, can, you can proliferate their cells and their component and their DNA. And you can now read the DNA composition of each of those embryos. You can check the 24 chromosomes that, made up in, uh, that make human beings yes. on each embryo. From that, you can know which embryo is normal, which one has a Down syndrome, which is male, which is female, or which one has sickle cell or not. 
So that is basically what it is. At what month can this be done? At what, how many weeks old, how many days old, how many hours old, how many minutes old can this be done? You can do this on the day three embryo or the five embryo. This is before you put the embryo back into the woman. So a man wants a girl or a boy. We can take those embryos. Maybe we get from IVF 12 eggs from the woman. We fertilize with the husband. We get 10 embryos developing. And then they grow. And the best type now with technology is to wait to day five when you have so many cells, as opposed to day three, when you have just eight cells and you take two from them, it's not good enough. But when you have about 144 plus cells, if you remove five to six out of those 144, okay, and you take it aside, the remaining 138 cells will rapidly divide back into 144. And you can go and freeze it. So about 10 cells, 10 embryos have been frozen. And you have taken from each embryo about five or six cells, yes. which you call trophectoderm cells, basically. So these cells individually can be analyzed. So when you get the result, you can now say that out of the 10 embryos, four are male, six are female. Hold so the thought, Prof. Hold the thought. Hold the thought. Hold the thought. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. We are back. If you're just joining us, I still have Professor Aladakwa Shiro, the MD Medical Arts Center and the co-pioneer of the IVF uh, process in Nigeria. And he's talking to us on surrogacy and pre-implantation genetic testing. That is how... Uh, it's a process where you can determine, uh, do fam family balancing, that's determine the sex of the baby you want, um, have a baby without sickle cell, and, uh, and without Down syndrome. Prof, thank you. How about couples who already have sickle cell, like SS, SS, married to SS? Very, uh, if you are an SS and you're married to an SS, Yes. It will almost be very difficult to even get pregnant. Yes. And um, if you do, you're going to be having excess. So what we do... In uh, that case, where does this pre-implantation genetic testing? You see, you can't do anything there. You cannot do anything because you have excess from the father and excess from the mother. So, so you, it must be like an AS have, or yes, with an... An AS to an AS. Okay. Okay. Or an AS to an SC. A -A. SC. If you have AA and you are married to an AS, you're okay. You're okay. Yes, because you have the least, the worst you have is an AS, AS baby. Yes. Yeah, but once you are AS and you are AAS, husband and wife, there's that chance that you can have an SS. And there's also a 25% chance you can have a normal baby. But you don't want to take a chance. That risk, you want to be sure. So that is why you go for genetic diagnosis. What we do in our center, at the medical center, is this. Uh, couples approach us before they get married. That my, my boyfriend or my girlfriend is AS and I'm also AS. What can you do? And we tell them that you have two options either to go and find somebody else, or if you're going through the technique of genetic testing, it's not an easy thing. It is one, you're going to go through IVF, two, it's not cheap. And this is what is also involved. We have to take probes from the Bukas smear. From, what is that? We take the, uh, the mouth, the cheek. The cheek. The yeah. scrape the cheek. We, we have to scrape the cheek for you and your, and your husband in order to know your true genetic composition. 
We have to do the same for your parents and for any of your siblings. That is what will be used to, de to develop a probe, the genetic mapping. So that genetic mapping is what we will use to test those embryos that come from you and your husband. As a result of that, we can now tell from each embryo we test where the A is coming from and where the S is coming from. Let me explain clearer. Let's say the man AS huh, is A1S1. Yes. And the wife AS is A2S2. And when you have a baby, the baby will be A1S2. S2. OK? Yes. It cannot be A1S1. No, yes. it must be from. But the S2 that we're, coming, we're talking about, is it from the wife's husband, uh, father, or mother? Is it clear? It's clear. So we can now tell the mapping and know which of the, when we have when we say an embryo is AS, we can tell that that A belongs to the father, father or the and for the mother through the parental tree that we have. And that's what we use to do to do the mapping. So it's very involved and very it's accurate. Very, very, it is a hundred percent accurate. When we say it's AS, it's AS. Even though in science we always say it's 99.9% .9 accurate because we always see 1% or 0.1% to, to chance. But it is more uh, involving than when you are doing sex determination or chromosomal abnormality. That involves just the husband and the wife. So husband and wife can engage in that entity yes. and they can get it to term. But when it comes to sickle cell testing, it involves parents and siblings. And we have a problem because some people don't want to involve their the parents. parents or their siblings. So that takes time. Prof, would you like to say how much this would cost? Would you like to say? The, the cost for IVF is the same as all over. Yes, it ranges. It but so. genetic testing is very expensive. Like and you, 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 you're looking at about uh, 1.6 to 1.8 million, depending on the exchange rate, because there is a foreign content in it, in dollars. That is when you're doing, is that the embryo, when you're doing the embryo? The genetic the analysis, genetic analysis. analysis, the analysis, because the, the sickle cell analysis, there are few labs in the world that can actually do that probing. And if you have an IVF clinic, it is not good to be also running those uh, uh, tests in your clinic. Why? Because it's too cumbersome. But and you do? I do part of it, but not 100%. I, I, we run the, most of the genetic testing, but not for sickle cell. Because the sickle cell testing, hopefully when we have enough, like about 100 cases per cycle per month, then we can do it. Yes. Because the test, that genetic, uh, genetic mapping, the kit for you to break even, you must be running 100 cases a month. So unless other centers are sending it to us, then we can run it here. But in the interim, through the pre-implantation genetic testing, you can determine, you can determine an embryo. We can yeah. determine the, the, embryo the sex of an embryo. The sex of an we embryo. We can determine the chromosomal abnormality of an embryo. The chromosomal abnormality are like yeah. uh, um, uh, Down syndrome. Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, and all that. And we can also... What we're doing now is that when, you, if you look at a uh, for sickle cell, hold the thought. It's hold the thought. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We are back, and if you're just joining us, I still have Professor Ladakwa Shiro in the studio with us. Um, 
Prof, in these remaining moments, yes. um, I want to ask you again about this pre-implantation genetic testing. You find that the parents who have children who have sickle cell go through a lot. Yes. Um, it's a lot of stress. Hospital every day, hospital every hour and all that. So once you do this um, pre-implantation genetic testing. Testing, yes. And then you can isolate or remove the embryos that have sickle cell. Correct. And then implant the one that is sickle cell that free. Anoma, uh, that, that are normal. That are normal. What are the benefits? So many. Uh, first of all, at least you will be rest assured that the baby that is inside you is normal. Okay. And for those parents who already have a sickler, and HBSS, yeah. they can add to read before the diagnosis what we call HLA typing, so that the baby that is being that is to be born can have the same genetic composition as the baby with H, uh, with sickle cell, so that he can or she can now donate a bone marrow for a bone marrow transplant for the other ones for the baby that is affected so that he can be cured, which is the technology of bone marrow transplant for sickle cell babies. So that is a major benefit, and it's a breakthrough in science. And the fact that also couples like that, who have the means, can select babies that are normal, instead of going through the stress of, a, of having a, an, an affected baby, which can be so much of hospital visitation and, and painful process is very good. And I'm pleased and uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and yet very happy to say that in our center, we've been able to be part of the cutting edge science globally. And that uh, we always make sure that once there's something new going on out there, we are part of it, and we are, we are not left behind. And that is uh, something that um, has been my, my desire and my objective that in the field of reproductive technology, Nigeria is not behind. Because as of today, virtually 95% of infertility cases of surrogacy uh, desired cases of pre-implanted genetic testing can be done in this country for patients. So they don't have to go abroad to do it. Those who go abroad is maybe because they live abroad. In fact, many come from Canada, from other places, to come to Nigeria, to come to us to do this because they find it more accessible and we have more empathy for our own people. Mm -hmm. Unlike before, where um, in Ebola and in Ebola culture, a woman who will, will can't have a child, she'll probably marry another woman yes. for her husband. Yes. And that was her own traditional, which caused, which now she now became a second wife and now caused a lot of problems. Absolutely. So today, people have the means, instead yes. of going to marry and yes. uh, share their husbands with Absolutely. someone else, they can have somebody to rent their womb, which mm -hmm. is what surrogacy is. Yes, and also, um, like in the old days, also when it has to be a problem with the man, when they will get another, maybe somebody from the family to meet with the wife, in order to, to get her pregnant, we can also get the sperm from the husband. And then, either from no, the, no, no from matter the how, testes. No matter yes. how, okay. No Even if the man has no sperm count, absolutely. you can always get the sperm from the testes. Yes, we call it testicular uh, sperm aspiration. So that we are giving couples the opportunity and the chance to have children of their own, which by United Nations, and WHO is now regarded as a human rights issue. That every couple who is living in this world have the desire and the right 
to have unless it, unless it's by baby. choice if you don't want unless they are, unless it's by choice but if they want it a man or a woman you should help them to have it and, and the infrastructure should be given to them and with the pre implantation so. genetic yeah. testing, husbands who are always accusing the wives of having all girls, they have the choice. They can have the baby. To come boys. and have a boy that yes. they want. And yeah. families who are always Absolutely. having uh, uh, boys and can they don't need come to, and have Yes, girls. and they don't, they don't need to remarry. Go and marry, keep Other marrying women just because they want because to. Because they want it. Prof, thank a you. Boy. Thank you. It's been always wonderful talking with you. And uh, we always feel so. Uh, uh, as if we were in the university with you and <laughs> because you, you empower us with so much information. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's always an honor. So I look forward to having you another time to come and talk to us on another issue. God bless. God is awesome. And I always say to people that there's a man part and there's a God part. And the God who gave doctors wisdom to come up with things like this, the pre-implantation genetic uh, testing and the surrogacy. So like the prof said, according to United Nations, every woman, every man, you have the right to have a child. So you have no reason not to have a child if you want to have a child. And if you want to stick with one like me and a girl and uh, you're satisfied, so be it. Thank you. Uh, it's been wonderful just talking with you. Goodbye. That is my factor. See you again next week. God bless.